Hola amigos, pero no, y saludos desde Medellín, otro día maravilloso aquí. El tema de hoy es simplicidad. ¿Y por qué es importante para recuerdo que en nuestra, para decir, en nuestro viaje en nuestra nueva lengua, no es necesario para siempre buscar por el respuesta complicado o por, porque el, el vocabulario super técnico. Es para recuerdo que en verdad es mejor para comunicar nuestras ideas muy fácilmente, con claridad. Entonces, para evitar complejidad y buscar más o menos con más simplicidad. Ese es el tema de hoy. So, hello again from Medellin. Um, so, the theme of today is simplicity or keep it simple. Because I think the thing to remember really when we're learning our new language, we can get a bit caught up with, oh, I need to have really sophisticated phrases and complicated words because otherwise people will think I'm stupid or you know I need to impress people with this complicated language. Now technical language does have its place. There are some things we we have to use technical phrases to explain. There's no other way to do it. But equally if you think very carefully about it People who are very good communicators generally don't always use that many technical words. They tend to have a, a nice easy style of uh, speaking and they're usually able to explain often quite complicated things with quite simple language. Now that may take some preparation, that's true. Um, you know, that's not, a, not as easily said than done, but um, it's to bear in mind that if we look always for complicated or um, let's say sophisticated language all the time we might end up sounding a bit too artificial, a bit theatric um, so really try and keep it simple it's probably going to be easier to say easier to remember and even if you have to repeat a few phrases now and again, certainly at the beginning, you're going to get a better, more fluid style because you'll not be struggling for, oh, how do I say that word? Um, pick things that are easier to say and try and use that slightly more basic vocabulary to describe the things you want to say. Now, sure, there are occasions when, you know, there, there is a, the, the better word to use. But at least at the beginning, don't try and make it too complicated. Um, if you can find an easier way to say it, that's probably best. Not only will it be easier for you to say it, but probably your audience, whoever that is you're speaking to, will appreciate the fact that you don't sound like uh, a professor of <laughs> philosophy or something who's trying to impress them with long and complicated words. I mean, that has its place, but unless you're in academia, you don't need to speak like that. So think about that. Um, there is a very big difference between academic writing and indeed literature, which can use all kinds of different um, words and phrases to express complicated ideas, and the way that we talk to each other in real life. Much of our conversations are actually using a fairly small vocabulary, and that's okay. So that's a good thing. That's something to bear in mind, because really, 
unless you're training to become a translator of literature or academic texts, you can probably manage quite well with a, a substantially reduced vocabulary, at least in terms of the words you use every day to describe your ideas and your thoughts and feelings to other people. Now, OK, the more reading and listening you do on as many topics as you can find is always going to help you, because at least you'll understand what's being said around you. But in terms of a working vocabulary that you can use to talk to people every day, less is more. Keep it simple. That's the idea for the day. So, déjame saber, como siempre, en los comentarios. But for now, from Medellin on this lovely afternoon. Also cheerio.